application of rebar allows a link to be set up between two concrete parts, moulded sidewalls, repair of shells or columns, for example. Setting rebar cannot be improvised. It must support the mechanical link and must be fire resistant. The principle is as follows. A hole is drilled into the existing block. The resin is injected. Rebar is inserted and sealed. The floor is poured. Pay attention to the depth of the anchoring. If the hole is too shallow, the bond may not be secure. Here the link is secure, but there is no load transfer. The correct anchoring depth should guarantee the link as well as the load transfer. One must start with the correct equipment. The drill and drill bit that is appropriate for the correct diameter and depth of rebar. A wire brush and blowout tool for cleaning the hole. An applicator gun, a resin cartridge, an injection nozzle, an extension tube the same depth as the rebar hole and its measuring cap. The rebar to be set must be cleaned and degreased. The PPE, personal protective equipment, that is necessary for this operation includes gloves, goggles, ear protectors, masks. A marker is used to identify the correct drilling depth. Dust has been created by the drilling. If the resin is injected directly, it will stick to the dust. There will be no adhesion to the sidewall, which will result in a poor bond with the rebar. It is therefore essential that the hole be cleaned. How to do it? First of all, blow out dust starting from the bottom of the hole. In this way, the dust at the bottom of the hole is removed. This operation can also be carried out with compressed air. Only the dust sticking to the sidewall remains. This needs to be removed with a wire brush. The blue nozzle must then be used again to make sure all residue is removed. The hole needs to be very clean. Before injection, start by checking the use-by date of the resin. The measuring cap should be cut to the diameter of the hole. The cartridge contains two active products which must be thoroughly mixed to ensure correct curing. This is the role of the nozzle which mixes the product during the operation. It has a baffle system designed for this purpose. If the nozzle is cut, curing is not guaranteed. A marker is placed on the extension tube to identify a point halfway down the hole. The nozzle is fitted onto the cartridge and the cartridge is placed in the applicator gun. The tube is filled with resin so that the first pressure on the trigger expels the mix. The injection must be carried out from the bottom of the hole.
Each time the trigger is pressed, a given quantity of extruded product is expelled. The operator presses and maintains the pressure whilst slowly withdrawing the tube from the hole. It is of no use to systematically continue pressing on the trigger. The resin presses on the measuring cap and pushes it outwards which prevents air bubbles forming. The marker appears. The injection is then stopped by releasing the trigger. The rebar is inserted with an alternating rotation movement all the way to the bottom of the hole. To ensure the rebar is set properly, the resin must come up all the way to the top of the hole. Here, the injection has not been correctly carried out, as air bubbles are trapped in it. Why? The main causes are an extension tube that is too short, products coming out of the pistol too fast, or injection without a measuring cap. The consequences are, when the rebar is inserted, the air is compressed. There is a risk of product being ejected into the operator's face. The lack of continuous adhesion reduces the quality of the bond. For a large job, it is essential to use compressed air or an electric applicator. The empty cartridges will be treated as hazardous waste. The curing time varies according to the resin used and the external temperature. A label on the cartridge provides application instructions. In order to guarantee the quality of the rebar application, it is essential to comply with each stage in this procedure. 